hello guys good morning i hope you're doing very well welcome to my sewing corner welcome back to my channel um if you're new here you're very much welcome thank you for stopping by and thank you for clicking on this video okay so it's morning where i am i don't know if it's morning where you are so if it's afternoon or evening good day to you okay and i hope you're staying safe and i hope you're enjoying yourself Okay, so today I'm going to be sharing with us how to make this gown displayed on the screen over there. Can you see that gown? Yeah. So I'm just going to be illustrating how to make that dress. I'm going to be sketching, um, telling us the, the type of material to use, telling us the measurements, telling us everything that you need to know about this dress. Okay. I would have loved to to draft and cut it and even sew it, but you know I. To be economical <laughs> let's be frank that may not be possible for all, all my videos i do that whenever i have the opportunity but i do not have that opportunity now but i still i still care for my family members here on youtube and my facebook page and also if you've not if you've not subscribed to our youtube channel please check it out amazing so in corner if you have not liked our page on facebook amazing so in corner so make sure to follow us and to subscribe and to like us to get updates from us every time we upload new videos okay so let's just go straight without wasting time i really don't like i don't want this video to take too much of our time now looking at this dress over there now that dress obviously you can tell that this material but if you can't tell i'm going to be telling you that this kind of material this dress is a corporate dress okay and the kind of material used for this dress there are different type of material you can use for it i really can't say the exact one that was used for this picture that was used for this dress in this picture because i don't have it i am physically but there are materials that you can use that was to give you the results they got okay so we have the poly material the poly material is material that is stretchy and a bit thick, it's thicker than the lycra material. You know, we have lycra, okay? So, I actually sell material, so I sell up this material, and I know most of this material well, that's why I'm, I can recommend them, okay? Uh, for this kind of project, I will not advise that you use a lycra material. So, to be honest, first I just get a poly material, okay? So now they use the poly material for the upper part as you can see a plain material and a flowered material for the skirt. Okay, so now let's dissect this dress. This dress is a gown, okay, and as you can see, you know, as with tall gowns, you have the bodies, okay, you have the bodies. So <laughs> okay. You have the bodies and you have the skirts of the gown. Okay, please don't just pardon my sketch. Okay, so this is what a gown is. There are gowns without join. Obviously, this one has a join in here, you can see. But there are gowns like um, your hairline gown without joining, your flag gown without joining, different types of gown without joining. But this one has a join in here at the half length. So from here, from here to this place is what we call the half length if you don't know okay this is where the bust point is and this is the under bust and this is the waist it all depends on where you're using for your reference point for plus size women I always recommend that I use the under bust as the reference point now for this person for this dress you can see that the half length it goes to the navel okay and you can see that at that point there was another flare there okay you can see there's another flare around that joining okay now we can't see the back of this dress from the picture attached but i can tell you that the back is going to have a zipper allowance even though it's a stretchy material yeah it's going to have a zipper allowance and not just the zipper allowance it's the flare is going to get to the back bodies okay now, the skirts now we have talked about the skirts you know how to draft a basic body if you don't know how to draft a basic body it's just click on the, the, the video that will pop up on the screen now i will attach it to the cards and if you have not seen it check our page or check our youtube channel you will see videos on how to draft this and how to even sew some of them okay so 
you just draft your basic bodies and as you can see for this um, bodies now let's talk about the neckline the neckline for this bodies is a U neckline as you can see is a U neckline and it has a neck depth as an it should have a neck depth of let's say five to six inches it depends on your client if you're sewing for a busty person please do not go beyond five inches if you do not want to show cleavages so for the width is very close to the neck as you can see you can just go with four to 4.5 inches so it also depends on your client if you're sewing for a slimmer person then you may want to reduce it to like 3.5 or 3 quarter okay so that way you get the accurate design okay so now let's go to the sleeves and for the shoulder the shoulder line it depends on your client so for this person i can tell that is about eight inches and because if because of the material you're using poly material please when you're drafting do not add any allowance to it because of the material you're using as a matter of fact for all the bodies if you're at all you're adding please just add like one inch maximum but not even to the shoulder line okay you don't need for shoulder line if not it's going to the sleeve will fall to the, to the hand and you won't like it to not stand on the shoulder line okay So you don't want the sleeve that will not stand directly on the shoulder line. Okay, so please make sure to sew something. Make sure to draft and then you know, cut on that accurate because of the stretchiness of the fabric. Okay, so having done that, now let's go to you know, the sleeves. Obviously, this sleeve is a three-quarter sleeve. The reporter sleeves if it if it goes to the extreme end of the hand definitely it's going to be a long sleeve but this is a three quarter sleeve okay and it's very fitted it's a fitted sleeve because of the nature of the material okay so because if it were not a stretchy material you can't sew a fabric this tight if the material are not stretchy you the person won't be able to move a hand okay your clients will be able to move their hand okay so make sure that the material you're using is stretchy so that way you get the best of this the, this dress now let's go to the skirt part of this gown obviously this skirt part is a flare skirt and you know, we have different types of flare we have the 180 degree flare we have 360 degree flare we have 720 degree flare we have one 80 degree flare we have one for 40 degree flare different types of flare but let me tell you that this kind of flare because it's not dripping it's not um, it's not folding okay it's not and then it's not short if it's to be short then it's going to be 180 but this one has a bit of fullness as you can see from the side so i'm going to say it's a 360 degree flare so it's a full circle flare okay so how do you get a 360 degree flare? I actually have a video <coughs> on my channel on how to draft um, a peplum, okay? But I'm just going to be illustrating to us how to get a 360 degree flare using this my it's, um, my paper here, okay? So this is let's say this is what the, the fabric is. A 360 degree flare is a flare where you have a full circle, no joining. You do that will now split it. Okay, so definitely if you're posting a 360 degree flare, you want to take all your circumference and divide it for the circle because you're only going to have one circle around your dress. Okay, so then you fold into four. Now look at it, you fold like this one. Okay, and then you fold again. Can you see that take your circumference so if for this measurement now the circumference you need is your waist circumference okay to cut the flare okay so the circumference you need is your waist circumference and your waist let's say this person's waist circumference is but for this paper something that is similar that I want to so you are going to divide your waist circumference by four because you folded your fabric into four okay now you now had your zip allowance Okay, you had your extra allowance to it, so that way you're not there's no shortage. So place your table around 
this place to find 11 inches. So wherever 11 inches is, you mark this angle and you mark this angle and you come here from here and you measure it. Whatever you have here, make sure it's accurate at this point and find the midpoint and then you connect it so that it can be, so I give you a perfect circle, okay? And then you measure the length of your peplum. For this one we are working with, it's not too... Because it is cut, okay. So let's just say it's going to be, it's going to be about, it's going to be for you if you're working with your project, you can give it about, let's say 24 to 25 inches for the length. So <clears throat> you can measure your client depending on what your client wants, okay. So we can work with 24 to 25 inches. You don't want it to be too long. So you measure the length from here or from here. If you're measuring from here, definitely you're going to add what is here. Okay, so whatever you have, you just measure it around and then you trace it out and you cut it out. Okay. So it's very simple, it's not a difficult uh, style so whenever you see a style that you like first analyze it break it down don't let the style scale okay so this is what we have as you can see it's, this is what this full circle is there's no joining that is what we mean there are no there's no joining here that is why it's a 360 degree circle for 720 degree let me just let me just tell you this for 720 degree you're going to have two circles because 360 plus 360 is 720 so one for the front and one for the back definitely you're going to now divide so your measurements because you're going to have two circles you're going to just use your front measurement for the front flare and the back measurement for the back flare definitely you're dividing your measurements into two and sharing it into the circles okay so the same thing for other flares too the same thing 360 is the foundation of all the other ones, the then it's even for this 360. So you just divide the measurements accordingly. But for 180, you don't need to fold. You know, when we are drafting 360, we folded our fabric into four, like so. Yeah, but for 180, you just fold your fabric into two, like this. You just sorry, you just fold your fabric into two, like this. And you take your second friends and take your measurement. So you can tell that this one is not going to be as full. A 360 degree level. okay so that is that about the length so i've told you the measurement you can use to get the best of this you can also measure your clients to know what works for her but make sure it is not too long so that you can get the best of the style okay now the the, the dress has a pep being a moderately sized person the same peplum they use the the same the same 360 they use that they used for the small peplum too so you see the same way circumference that you consider exactly the same way you cut the small you cut the small just that the length will reduce okay. so and the length of this ring you can use 6.5 to 8 inches okay so that way please consider your allowance as well so that you don't have shortage in hand so you can add half allowance, uh, one inch allowance to all of this. Uh, you're going to use half inch to um, sew the hem, the extreme hem, and also to join the flare to the body. Okay. So with this, I think we've come to the end of this illustration. Don't mind, do not mind my drawing. If you have any questions for me, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe, stay in God, and God be with you.